Hey there, it's James with Make It Have a Greenhouse and Carps Bees, and I wanted to just give a quick update on how things are going in the grow tent indoors uh, as we approach the end of what I hope is the last cold snap here in Kansas. So in a few days, uh, I think things will warm up and start to be above freezing, and we'll move into spring. But uh, in the meantime, we've been growing these Carolina Reaper plants in the grow tent and you can see they're all making good progress here. Uh, we're using a humidifier to keep the, or the moisture in the grow tent uh, pretty high just to help the growth here. We have some more down here. And it's not all Carolina Reaper so I spent the last couple days actually weaving in some additional plants. So um, I ordered some small banana plants you see those in here there's more over here but in addition to those uh, we've also started some other things uh, we have um, right in here you can see we have those are some tomato plants and what i basically did is i just took my daughter's favorite cherry tomatoes that she likes i grabbed the largest one in the bunch split it into four sections and then planted the whole tomato and what happens is you'll have multiple plants grow up they get a little bit bigger than this and you can actually take them and separate them into individual pots and that's what i've done here you see with some of them already so these are individual tomato plants that will grow up and we will transplant those out to the greenhouse and eventually outdoors so here's another one right here that's doing quite well and one up here that's doing quite well and then we've also continued to do um, our seed sprouting in the in bags with um, a napkin or a paper towel. We basically put that uh, napkin or paper towel with some wet seeds into a Ziploc bag, you know, tape those to a window and let the sun kind of help those things sprout. And once they're far enough along, you can actually transplant them. So we have some kind of long uh, pepper plants that uh, we picked up at Aldi that the family really likes. So what I've done is I've sprouted those and since um, you know there is a risk that they could fail, especially since they're a little smaller than I normally like to transplant them at. So what I did is basically two per pot. So you see two of these little plants per pot and then what I'll either do, I got two options. One is if one's really weak, you know, we'll just snip it and let the stronger one grow. Um, or if you know they're both pretty strong then I may you know split them again into their own pot but that's what you see growing in here so lots of these and we just did most of these last night so they're just getting rolling here but so far so good looks like we're off to a good start so there you have it there's the grow tent cleaned it up a bit um, I do have these two brown planters in here and the plan with those is um there's going to be a few plants that I'm going to actually keep indoors uh, for the whole season. So once we get these bananas out here and we clear some space from the starter seeds here and the starter sprouts and seedlings, then um, we'll fill those up with some potting soil and get rolling. And, you know, just as a reminder, um, what you want to do is make sure you get indoor um, potting soil. That's what this is down here. Uh, so that you don't end up with any kind of insects in your indoor grow tent or house, especially the dreaded fungus gnat. So those are the worst thing to get in here. So what I do is I basically take that indoor potting mix and uh, put it into this five gallon uh, bucket here. Actually, I think this is a 10 gallon bucket, but um, and then add water, mix it up and then use that you know as I go ahead and fill in all these cups so there you have it all right I'll give you more updates as things get growing here but hopefully we'll be transplanting these into even bigger pots and get them outdoors soon so here's to warm days and spring coming soon thanks